I fell in love for the first time when I was 13 years old. It was to a young girl by the name of Sally Little. And even though she was a few months older than me, she used to hit her drives further than me. That made no difference. She was such a classy young girl and I've loved her ever since. Sally Little has won major championships on the LPGA Tour. She's won tournaments all over the world and she's remained completely unaffected. She's a classy lady now. And we're at the Copperleaf Golf Club where they've just done a golf day to pay tribute to this Hall of Famer. And we're gonna go inside and talk to this wonderful lady and wonderful golfer. Sally, it's lovely to have you alongside, although a little bit too far away, but let's start talking about golf. Your father, Percy, was a member at Metropolitan and he got you into the game. When did that happen? Well, it was an unusual start, uh, Dale, in a way, when I was a, a youngster of about four or five. My dad was a very, very fine player and we played at this little course called Metropolitan and you could drive around this course. So every Saturday and Sunday, my mom would go and stop at one of the holes to watch my father tee off. And I'd come around that turn and at six years old I'd go, oh no, not golf again. That's, that was my beginning. And um, a couple of years later at the age of 12, my father said, you know, would you like to learn? And I said, no, I'm not interested. You know, no girls played of my age and he said all right well I've bought a caddy cart how about earning some pocket money so from there after watching these men under a tree for about a, a, a month I said dad can I have a hit this was on the golf course he said no you just can't pick up a club on the golf course no you got to learn properly I said well that's fine after six months I asked him all right dad could you show me and he uh, had a seven iron, a putter and a five wood and he said all right we're going to start and you can't go on the golf course until you can get these clubs in the air, the, the five wood and the seven iron. And that was the beginning and still very casual, no, no pressure. He was wonderful in the sense that he gave me freedom to ex explore whether I would like the sport and, and what was so telling, you know, during those years they had the female membership and the male membership. There was great separation. The men had the bar and the ladies had the tea, tea room. And the lady said to my mom one day, you know, your little daughter's doing real well. Can she play with us on Tuesday afternoons? It'll be good for her to get, you know, some, <clears throat> some competition. So my father went to our headmistress and said, you know, Miss Griffiths, could my daughter get off on Tuesday afternoons? It was quite a thing, but she let me off and I teed up in their tournaments and won their competition two weeks in a row and they said no she can't play anymore <laughs> <laughs> so now my dad was so angry he marched back and got me to play on wednesday so I, I often say that my career started at the metropolitan with the men off the men's tees i played in their competitions from the age of 12. now can you imagine in those years men allowing this little one to, to play along with them. So my father had quite a lot of influence. When you started to play junior golf, obviously it was all boys and Sally Little. How'd that make you feel? Were you intimidated? Well, it was, but it really wasn't because I didn't really know any different any difference because Dale you got to understand I was starting to like it and I liked the competition level with the men so going in my dad t um, said listen I've entered you into the under 15 Western Province junior event I didn't even think and I show up and it's all boys and I play alongside of them and they actually ended up becoming my mates and the great thing is I'm coming back and I'm re-meeting all of my mates like you after 50 years. It's quite a, a, quite a turnaround for me. By the time you got to your late teens, you were the best lady golfer in South Africa. You got picked to play for South Africa in the World Team Championships, which were played in, in Spain. And of course you won that. And that was what changed your life. Tell us about that experience. It really did. But the interesting thing was, uh, uh, a man by the name of George Bloomberg saw potential in me when I was 15 years old and talked to my parents about s when I was ready to go out of the country. And being picked to play for South Africa that year, I was 17, and George called my parents and said, she needs some international experience. Why don't we send her to some of these really big events? And the first event I wanted to play in was the British Women's Amateur, and they boycotted me. 
So I was not too happy be because of, of our situation with apartheid, but France accepted me. So my first real international exper experience was in the French amateur. I think I got to the semi-finals, met Catherine Lacoste, mm. best player in the world. And then I went on to the US and I was um, so grateful I could compete in the US Amateur and the US Open. I didn't do very well. I missed the cut in the US Open by one. But I'd gained all that initial experience for a month. So going into that event in Spain, I felt like I could take on the world and ended up finishing low individual. It was an exciting time. George and Brenda Bloomberg were quite amazing people. They were very special and, and gave so much to golf and, and to junior golf. And, and the funny thing is, there are no accidents, I believe, to this day, because the way I met them was I played Brenda in the Transvaal Ladies Open at Houghton, her home course, and she was a pretty good player. And at the age of 15, I beat her nine and eight. <laughs> and she went home to tell her husband and pushed him to come out and watch me play. And he was a bit, bit resistant and reluctant, but he showed up during the final. And that's how our lives started. And they actually took me on my first trip out of the country because I was 17, didn't, didn't know anything, flying to America. They actually hosted me in the sense I got to go to the men's open at Marion and then went on and I stayed with all their friends at different, different events. So they basically gave me that foundation and um, I often say, you know, the path was open for me to, to start that life because it's not an easy life. There were some great lady golfers in South Africa at the time, Jackie Mercer, Jeanette Bird, Judy Angel. Just talk about some of the ladies. Well, they were incredibly competitive. Um, I remember Jeanette Bird. Jeanette Bird was so intimidating to, to compete against, and she is, she's a very sweet lady, but on the golf course, she was an absolute, um, I, I felt like I could not get past her. She, she had that presence. Um, another one was Mary Clements, was a wonderful golfer. But I often say the one that really helped me the most was a lady from um, England called Esme Piercy. And she played for Western Province. And my first uh, time playing for Western Province, Esther actually was my chaperone. And I ended up playing a lot of golf with her and learning a lot of technique about uh, match play because I was a terrible match player. I just couldn't win because I was so intimidated. Now you see that's where you were so lucky because you had somebody like her as your chaperone. You know I had Simon Hobday, oh Dennis my. Hutchinson, <laughs> you know people like that. That's why I've ended up like this. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but I guarantee you had a lot more fun than I did <laughs> with Esme. Well, you were engaged at a young age and um, obviously it got to the point where you had to make a decision. You know, are you going to stay in South Africa? Are you going to get married? Maybe play amateur golf for a while, have, have a family? Or are you going to now take on the world and try and become one of the best golfers in the world? It was a tough decision. Very tough decision. But it came at a time when I had just turned 18, when, when we decided to get engaged. And I'd just come back from that trip. And I felt it, it was a, a time where I just had started to feel my um, talent as a, prof as a golfer. I wasn't a professional yet, but I felt like I'd never seen women play golf like they did overseas. And I yearned for that. I'd gone through all of this experience as an amateur in South Africa and felt like I couldn't go any further. Because, you know, you get to a place where you've won, and then what do you do? Do you turn around and get married and, and, and I decided that I wanted to experience the US at that high level. And, and he wasn't a golfer and he couldn't quite understand that passion. So um, the decision was made. I mean, I spoke to my family about it and my dad said, just give it a chance. Go overseas, enjoy and see what happens. And, and that's why my life turned in that direction. 
when you got to America, you were the only non-American playing on the LPGA Tour. That also must have been an interesting experience. I was, and, and, and actually it was quite intimidating, but in a sense, a lot of those American players were, were very, very helpful to me. They could see I was wet behind the ears. Um, Bob Tosky was a coach at the time, and um, I was sent to go and see Bob through George Bloomberg, because Bob Tosky was the best, um, absolute best coach in the country and in the world at the time. And he and might I, still be. I, he's marvelous, <laughs> even today at 80. And uh, Bob said to me, listen, there's nothing I can do for you. You just need to get experience. There's one player that I teach by the name of Jane Blaylock. She's number one in the world. You just go tell her that Bob, Bob sent you. And you go play practice rounds with her. She's very nice. So I did. I went to her and I said, Miss Blaylock, can I play a practice round? She was wonderful. So I ended up getting into that group where I would play practice rounds with these, um, with these players. And I watched everything that they did. And I think that's the difference. If I was to say, I'm getting off, off subject here, I wasn't afraid to ask these talented best players in the world to show me how to hit a shot. I find with women today, especially professional women or young amateur women coming up, they won't ask. They're afraid or there's something stopping them from going to talk to the best. And I think my career was made on asking. And if I was to ask, if a, a youngster came to me today to ask me the best way forward, I'd say to them, you need to learn from the best and experiment. And I did, I asked everybody. And the one that scared me was, I think the most talented male or female swing I'd ever seen in my life. And that was Mickey Wright. She was the most magnificent golfer. She, she was tall, but she hit the ball like a male. I have never seen such velocity on a, on a, a ball struck. I mean, I'm looking at her and the sound, it was like, Jack Nicholas hitting the ball. Now, uh, the great Ben Hogan, who's regarded as the greatest hit of a golf ball that ever lived, said that Mickey Wright had the finest golf swing, male or female, that there's ever been. I mean, that is very high praise. Was she that good? She was marvelous. And um, I was terrified of her. You've got to understand she's a lot older and I'm this pipsqueak coming in. And I had to go and I wanted to, uh, I wanted to know her mind. And I asked for... Um, a tea with her and she was a bit grumpy and you know what do you want and I said I just want to ask you you know she goes well um, what do you want to know I said I want to know what it's like to be so talented and I've won so much can you tell me she said no but I'm gonna tell you we're going out on the golf course I got a practice round with her and she ripped me from one side to the other she said you have the most beautiful golf swing. You hit the ball so far, but you can't chip and putt. What's the matter with you? Why are you out here? I said, I learned very quickly. I mean, I had tears. And I said, well, that's why I'm here. She said, all right, I'm going to show you how to hit these shots. You want to learn? I said, yes. So every chance I got, she opened up to me and she was actually a very big supporter of me throughout my career. She would call and go, how are you doing? Well, why do you shoot 66 and then 76? Something's wrong with you. You know, that's the way she pushed, but um, she was marvelous. Now, you're now on the LPGA Tour, but uh, you're still a very young girl. You're 18, 19, 20 years old. You must have missed your family, you must have missed all your friends back in South Africa. It must have been very tough. It was hard. Especially for a girl. Yeah, you're right. It's tough for a guy, but it's a girl, and it's even it, more difficult. It really was in the sense, I remember my first year on tour, I only played seven events, Dale, because I was so homesick. And I ended up finishing Rookie of the Year, and I was terribly unhappy came home and I said to my parents, I'm not liking this one, but because I'm not achieving anything. 
I should have won by now. You know, that's the attitude of a 19-year-old. Uh, and um, so my dad was very instrumental in, in guiding me through this. And for the first three years, I came home more than I played in the U.S. And I said to him, finally, I said, I'm not, I'm not liking this too much. And he said, you know, Sal, fair enough. You can stop any time if you're not liking it. But you, I know your personality. In years to come, if you don't really give it full, a full chance, you're never going to be happy. And he said, I'll tell you what you should do. You should play for 12 months and not come home. We'll come to see you. I said, you'll come? And they came out for five weeks. I won my first event. And then... While your dad was there? While my parents were here, were there. It was so exciting. And every time they were around, I won. You know, people think that you get pressure from family, but not with mine. I just loved them being alongside of me. And the career took a whole new turn. I had, I think, six top tens. And I said, boy, I'm kind of liking this. I can get used to this. And that was the change. And uh, the career just started to grow from there. Tell us about the majors that you won. Because some of them were pretty exciting. You know, I think they're golfers and golfers. I was one of those players that really geared for majors. I, the tougher the competition, the course, the more I aspire to, to rev up my game. And I, I don't know if you feel that way too. When some people just compete every week to win. I wasn't that type of player. And um, I, often my friends would say, but you're not competitive enough. I said, I am. I'm working towards the next major. Um, my first major was the LPGA Championship, which is the most sought after. A lot of South Africans wouldn't know that um, in the sense they look at the US Open or the British Open as being the greatest tournaments. As a professional, when you win your own major championship, it's such a great honor amongst your peers. So for me to have won my first um, major as the, uh, being the LPGA, it meant a great deal to me because I'd finally reached that level of being able to compete against them. Who, who did you actually beat in that? I, I beat uh, Nancy Lopez. One and of the best. Jane Blaylock. Num she was number two or three and Nancy. I, I had such great rivalries with, with Nancy and Jane. And Jane is still mad at me today. She's one of my best friends that she's never won a major. And she holds that against me <laughs> to this day. Um, so. And tell us about the other majors. The other major was um, the, the Canadian ladies um, open and that came at the, the latter part of my career in 1988. Um, that was more of a, a win coming back from adversity. I'd been not well for several years fighting uh, a female disorder and I was off the tour at the, in my prime from about 1983 for two or three years, I really did not compete that much. So coming back and winning another major that late in my career, it, it was an incredible experience. And in Canada, in Vancouver, I felt like I was in Cape Town. All these Canadians came out and these South, African came, these South Africans came out to watch me. And what was so exciting about that win, Dale, I remember I hadn't played very well at all for a good 12 months and I was frustrated. We'd just come from a very big event in Delaware and I wasn't feeling too happy about my game and we had to fly all the way to Canada, long, long flight, get there, I'm tired. And I just said, you know, Sal, you're just putting too much pressure on yourself. You're not going to go practice at all. You're just going to go walk the course no practice this week. And I just went and walked the course, looked around a bit, and the first round I shot 74. You feel, huh? And then I, uh, I think I shot 66, and I ended up shooting another 69, 
I, my final round was paired with the next superstar, Laura Davies. And Laura da Davies had just come off winning the US Open and another very long hitter by the name of Sherry Turner. And here is a pipsqueak pea shooter <laughs> teeing it up with these two big guns. And Laura Davies, honest to goodness, they did a swing speed at an event with John Daly for national television. Her swing speed was quicker than John's. John wasn't too happy about that, being, being uh, it was on national television they did the swing speed. So yeah, I have this lady and she's out driving me by 75 meters. That's how far this woman still hits the ball. And Sherry was 40 yards ahead of me. And I just said, just compete. And um, I was one shot ahead going into the final. And we got to about the 16th hole. I was still a shot ahead of them. And I three putted. And now how you berate yourself.